we have melody, M, rhythm, R, that's the mister. Rhythm has your two hips moving. That's in case you're struggling with your spelling of rhythm. I know I used to struggle with that when I was younger. Duration is also kind of rhythm. We'll come to that later. Then pitch and articulation. It's a tricky one that sometimes, articulation. We've got four for T. Tempo, texture, tonality, timbre. The dish, his last name, Mr. Pat Dish. Dish, dynamics, very important. Instrumentation, also known as orchestration if you're listening to a certain style of music like baroque, classical, romantic. There's two for S, three actually. Structure or form, uh, style, genre, similar things. We'll come to that later. And then silence. And the H is harmony. So let's begin with melody. Melody is the first letter in Mr. Pat Dish. It's also a very important musical element. And in simple terms, we can say that the melody is the tune. So, let's move on to rhythm. Uh, we can use the word duration as well to describe rhythm. Uh, rhythm is all about how long or short the notes are. So when we're listening to rhythm, we are listening to note lengths, as well as the kind of style a rhythm creates. I'm sure you've seen this grid of different note lengths and their corresponding rests. It's good to learn that by memory, because that will help you to use the specific note names in an exam like semi-brief, minimum, crotchet, quaver, semi-quaver. So let's move on to pitch. Pitch has a very straightforward definition. It is how high or low the instruments or voices sound. And that is it, we're done with pitch. We're gonna move on, pitch is over. Okay, I lied. There's a bit more to it than that. When we look at pitch, we can go into detail. For example, voices, we've got the bass, male, lowest voice bass, and you've got tenor, which is a higher male voice. You've got alto, which is a low female voice. And you've got soprano, which is pretty much the highest female voice. And if we look at the size of the instruments, the smaller the instrument, the higher it sounds, like this little flute here, which would sound like that. Or at the lower end of the scale, we've got the double bass, which would sound like this. A couple of words that are important are the word ascending. Uh, this is a major ascending scale. Listen. And you get the other way around, descending. This is a descending minor scale, for example. So we move on to articulation. Now, put articulation into the red zone, the danger zone, you can see my red background. That's impressive, isn't it? I've changed the color of the screen. The reason why I put it into the danger zone is because I've often found that some, some students don't revise articulation for some reason as much as they could. Now, it is important to revise because it's all about how the performance technique sounds, how someone plays a certain note in a certain way to create a certain mood. I'm going to put five crotches up on the screen. You can see that those five crotches all last one beat because that's how long a crotchet lasts. However, you will have probably spotted that there are five very different symbols at the top of those crotchets. So that means you play them in five very different ways. This is what articulation is all about, playing a note in a certain way to create a certain effect. If we look at some of the definitions, and I just connect the staccato with a yellow arrow, so we know that staccato means to play the note short. Staccato would sound like this. Da. Da, 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 very short, as opposed to, for example, tenuto, which is long, or full, its fullest length. La, 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 la. I hope you like my singing of my staccato and tenuto. I practiced them all year. Okay, I didn't. So, we move on to tempo. Now, I know you know the definition of tempo, of course. Tempo is the speed of the beat. It is a well-known musical element and one that we can change in music quite straightforwardly. And if we're discussing how to um, describe music, we could just start with the simplicities of is it fast or is it slow? But of course, there are more detailed words we should be using, such as the well-familiar Italian words of Allegro, Andante, Largo, Lento. They're just four examples. There's loads more. And the reason why we should be using these Italiano words is that they appear in lots of music and they could well appear in your exam. You should also be familiar with the Italian word for get faster, accelerando, and the Italian word for get slower, decelerando. But that means get faster and get slower. Unless you're listening to more modern music, such as pop, dance, and rock, probably going to be dealing with beats per minute. That's tempo in a nutshell. There is a so we move on to the second of our T in Mr. Pat Dish, which is texture. Texture is a very, very important element of music because it's all about the number of layers that you can hear being played. And there are many different types of questions on texture. And there are some well-known keywords 
commonly known as the phonics, which we'll come to in a texture specific video and we'll touch on briefly in this video. Texture can be described as thick, thin, dense, heavy, light. So for example, if you're listening to a big orchestra, it might sound like a thick texture like this. Or maybe just one player, like a trumpet player, would sound like this. So we move on to our third T in Mr. Pat Dish, tonality. Tonality is very important. It's very important for your ears to recognise changes in tonality. Your inner ear, your brain has to recognise things like major, minor, modal, because tonality is all about the key, the key signature. So if it's in a major key, if the tonality is major, it should sound happy. You, might, you should be able to recognise like a major scale like this. And the notes from that major scale will be used in a happy sounding piece like this. Now the opposite to major is minor. Now let's hear the minor music. Yeah, I think we'd all agree that sounds quite sad, morose. Ugh, timbre. Timbre is all about the character or quality of a musical sound. In other words, how does it sound? How does the instrument sound? Now you might be a bit confused with this, but if I asked you to describe the timbre of your instrument that you play, you'd probably be able to give me a couple of words to describe it. I play a trombone. Trombone sounds brassy. can sound airy sometimes if I play it in a jazzy way. Sometimes it can sound rich if I'm playing in an orchestra, especially if I'm playing chords with two other trombone players, for example. So what we're dealing with here is the way the specific instruments or voices sound, because remember, voices are instruments. Never disregard the voice. The voice is an instrument. The voice is important. Now, easiest way to think about timbre is just to listen. So, a trumpet might sound brassy, understatement, it's a brass instrument, it's definitely going to sound brassy, compared to a triangle, it might sound bell-like, compared to a violin, which might sound sweet. So D, dynamics, probably, let's be honest, one of the easier of the elements of music. Um, in that it's basically volume. So in terms of dynamics, we're dealing with loud and soft in the simplest form of thinking about it. Here's a little grid that can help you. Uh, yay! More Italian words. Pianissimo, piano, fortissimo, forte, mezzo forte, mezzo piano, diminuendo, crescendo. There you go. That grid's really helpful. Now what I thought we could do, guys, is um, if you copy out this picture of the frog, what you can do is you can colour in... Um, the colours to represent the different volumes. So for example, this section here, this top left section, yeah, says loud, so we get the forte here. And we have to colour it in blue. So every time you see an F colour it in blue. Yeah, and you can colour the frog in and you can bring it into the next lesson. Okay. You do not you don't you don't need to colour the frog in. It's, it's just it's just a joke. Move on. So instrumentation really all I can say in terms of instrumentation is is you need to recognize the instruments and the way that they are played so check that video out let's move on so we move on to the first of our S's in Mr. Pat Dish which is structure so we're gonna look at form and structure very similar words so musical form the shape structure and organization of music so we're kind of looking at the order of things in a piece of music, basically. So we come to the third of our S's in Mr. Pat Dish, which is silence, which is officially a musical element. Hmm. I'm not really sure how else I can help you with this. I think we'll move on. So harmony, our final word or musical element with our acronym, Mr. Pat Dish. Harmony, let's look at harmony. Well, in order to identify what harmony means, it is a very important element of music. I have to say that and you will indefinitely get questions on this. This is a great example of harmony. Very simple, but great. In the sense that we have a low note, we have a middle note, we have a high note, and they're playing together or singing 
if that's a singer, we don't know, because it's just a piece of music. We don't know what instrument or whether it's voices. But the definition of harmony is basically two or more notes heard simultaneously. Simultaneously. Long word. Alert. Don't be scared. It just means at the same time. And that is harmony. <laughs>